Hello, I'm Laura Garza, and I am doing my research on the impact that principal supervisors have on principals as they are leading for equity. There was a principal shift to become instructional leaders, and this occurred during the 2001 No Child Left Behind Act, in which principals became responsible for student achievement at a very high uh, stress level. And principal supervisors then needed to shift in order to support their principals as they became instructional leaders. Instructional leadership, uh, we know, positively impacts student achievement. And the research that we find supports this. That as we look at our marginalized groups, we need to really start thinking through how is it that our marginalized groups can be supported through the efforts of the principal? And in return, how does that principal supervisor support that principal to help increase student, ac student academic achievement for our marginalized students? So the purpose of this study is to gain a deeper understanding of how district level racial equity systems shape a principal supervisor's ability to coach and develop a principal to lead for equity. My positionality, uh, personally, I'm a Latina daughter, sister, wife, and mother. I have four children. I've grown up in Dallas um, and live here in Dallas now. Throughout my education, I attended predominantly white schools. And professionally, I've worked in Dallas ISD for the last 24 years. I've always worked in Title I schools, and I have experience not just as a teacher, instructional coach, but also as an assistant principal, principal, and executive director. And I, I, I believe that the relationships that I have built with the stakeholders and the uh, employees of Dallas will help me to uh, to open up doors so that I can have uh, interviews with um, with these individuals. So what does the literature say about the relationship of principal supervisors and principals? We're going to explore three different uh, trends that I explored. Principal supervisors as coaches, leadership practices with a focus on equity, and culturally relevant leadership. Principal supervisors as coaches, uh, the research shows that there's definitely this uniqueness about the relationship between a principal supervisor and the principal. One, merely because the principal supervisor still acts as an evaluator. However, they have to have a relationship in which uh, the principal feels supportive and feels that it is a relationship that has developed some trust so that they can be vulnerable enough to have real conversations um, so that they can be coached in a way that impacts student achievement. So this relationship is also collaborative and supportive and definitely it is a uh, situation in which the principal supervisor must act as an instructional leader as well. Leadership practices with a focus on equity. The research so far uh, indicates that leaders should receive training on culturally relevant practices, and this will align to how the leaders actually move forward in their own uh, leadership. There's also uh, what I noticed was that as we support principals, there seems to be a need for tools that help principal supervisors have difficult conversations around equity and race. And through that, uh, there is definite value in self-reflection, um, as stated by many of the researchers. And I found this to be true also in the research for principal supervisors as coaches. As we move into culturally responsive leadership, um, this area is, is 
pretty new in the field um, and definitely uh, I will need to do some more research around it. What I've found so far is that when leaders are being asked about culturally responsive leadership, um, they tend to uh, fear being labeled as ineffective. And so their responses may not necessarily be accurate. And researchers found that if leaders were actually um, collectively asked to review a rubric and to rate themselves, those rates tend to be more accurate than if they were to do them individually. Again, this goes back to that fear of being labeled as ineffective, or maybe as even uh, being uh, labeled as someone who is not aware of the racial um, disparities that were created due to systemic um, racism. But research does state that equitable leadership is crucial in shifting practices and beliefs. The trends that I noticed led me to these research questions. How do district level racial equity frameworks influence a principal supervisor's interactions as they work with principals to lead with equity? And two, how do principal supervisors engage with principals when coaching them to lead with equity? So far, there are two frameworks that stood out in the research, but I know that more research is needed in this area. The first is practice-focused framework of equitable leadership. Galloway and Ishii Maru created this framework to measure the proficiency of leading with equity. And they also explored the behaviors and interactions of principals and supervisors. I will be studying Dallas ISD, and I felt it was important to name here the framework that is being used or that has been named in the policy, which is Racial, Socioeconomic, and Educational Equity Strategic Framework. And I definitely um, need to do more research around this framework. So let's jump to the proposed methods. As we begin to research the context, um, my main uh, focus is going to be on that relationship with Dallas ISD principals and their supervisors. And my approach um, so far, I'm thinking, is going to be a case study, of course, bounded to Dallas ISD. I'm thinking it might be multi-case, considering that I'll be looking at multiple principals. And it's going to be flexible and rational approach is going to be used. When I think about the data collection, um, there are two types of interviews that will be conducted. One is the focus group in which I can engage principals and principal supervisors. And also uh, there is the chance of actually um, interviewing uh, in a focus group the racial equity team members that have worked um, with the district to create the policies and to start the work around professional development. I also plan on conducting semi-structured interviews in which principals, principal supervisors, and the racial equity uh, department deputy chief will be interviewed. And I want to use a semi-structured approach because I want to be able to um, have questions that I've already prepared, but definitely be able to listen and ask additional questions as they come up. Now in Dallas, we have many artifacts that can be reviewed. Um, initially, I plan on using surveys that principals and principal supervisors are given and also uh, review the district policy. The Racial Equity Office also has a website um, in which different agendas and professional development articles are housed in that website for use by administrators and other stakeholders. So I definitely want to review that website. And I want to uh, think about using or reviewing the principal supervisor's coaching agendas 
to identify how that relationship is built and how it's used when leading for equity. The participants uh, selected is going to be a purpose, purposive sampling, a quota sampling, and there will be a recruitment of individuals. The goal is to get as many uh, executive directors or principal supervisors to participate, and then hopefully have at least 25 to 30 principals that I would be able to also interview. Um, I want to have at least three to five focus groups. Again, they will be semi-structured. Um, saturation will be gauged as data is collected to determine if I need to proceed with uh, more interviews or if uh, the 15 to 25 is enough. And I also want to clearly state that there is a risk of response bias effect um, and we want to make sure that in the interview our participants um, don't risk uh, that while they are um, answering questions. I don't want them to to answer uh, thinking on what they believe I want them to say. I also thought it would be beneficial to observe um, and collect data in their natural setting. Uh, for instance, thinking about the principal supervisor and the principal relationship, really diving in to their sessions to see how uh, leading with equity looks in those relationships and that collaboration that they have. Moving into data analysis, I've not decided which software program I will be using. Um, I will explore those uh, more as I continue. When I think about validity, validity and analysis, I'm thinking about triangulation, member checks, and peer review. These are all important as um, the information uh, gets sorted and coded and even categorized. Um, I'm going in knowing that the coding is an iterative process, and I'm going to start with uh, edit codes from frameworks. So I'm going to pull those words at um, stand out in those frameworks so that I can have a starting point when I'm coding. And again, uh, use in vivo uh, codes as well, and descriptive phrases uh, can also be used as I'm coming up with those coding pieces. These are the references that I have as I've been starting my research. Again, there is more research to be done. Uh, in fact, I know that my topic um, needs to be narrowed down uh, some more, and so I definitely um, am, in, am interested in having a conversation around how I can narrow my topic um, so that I can be more successful as I start to really dive into the research. Thank you.